superfoods book. There is actually a chemistry that the superfoods, like goji berries, like cacao, like marine phytoplankton, like blue-green algae, it's like this in manufacturing. They deliver the raw materials to the warehouse. And then the super herbs, which are the top herbs in the world, then help your immune system manufacture everything that you need. Are we all aware that we have major immune system dysfunctions in our culture and civilization? I mean, major, major stuff going on. Everybody has autoimmune disorders, eczema, psoriasis, all kind of herpes, hepatitis, I mean, all kinds of things going on. How do we knock that stuff out? Well, I can tell you one thing, Western medicine is not gonna be able to figure out how to knock it out because they're on the wrong theory, totally. They're totally out to lunch, literally, metaphorically, and metaphysically. <laughs> So what I'm telling you here, what, what I'm going to get into here is really a critical thing. It's a combination of two things. It's the super herbs with the super foods together, right? Do you have, um, can we put up Revitify up here? Because I want to get into, yeah, let's click this. Great. Well, I'm going to talk about super herbs. Just get into like the ingredient, like the herbal ingredients. Yeah, right here. Okay. This is interesting. When Chad came to me, he's like, hey, this is this product we designed. What do you think of it? I was, like, I was looking at it, and I'm like, Moringa, I grew that. Tulsi, I grow that. Ashwagandha, I grow that. Gachu Cola, grow that. Ginkgo, just, I just planted four ginkgo trees in my house this week. I was like, okay, Ho Shu Wu. I've tried to grow it. I failed because it's too cold to climb it, but I'm going to grow it in Southern California. And I'm like, whoa, man, I, I've actually been growing this stuff. And so I have really intimate experience with those herbs. Now, what are those herbs? Moringa, there's a whole book. When I was, years ago, I was in Costa Rica, and a guy brought me a whole book. He said, you ever heard of this? I was like, no. So I started reading this book on Moringa, and then I started helping him grow it at a garden down there. Um, the Moringa is, a, is like a tree. It's like a small plant becomes a tree. You can eat the leaves of it, crush them down, dry them, and mix them with water, and it purifies the water, kills pathogens in the water. And you can gun it down as a superfood, so it knocks out, for example, not only the pathogens, but also delivers like four times the calcium as like spinach, six times the magnesium. I mean, in every category of the major minerals, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, it's like high, 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 high. In fact, compared to like vegetables, it doesn't even compare. It's like way higher in all categories than vegetables. And it really is a vegetable. It's really a vegetable, because when you're living in the tropics, you're like, well, what am I going to eat? Well, if moringa's growing there, you would literally go pull the leaves off and throw it in your salad. Same with ginkgo, by the way. Ginkgo is, have you ever been to lower Manhattan, down like, house, like south of Houston? Yeah. yeah. It's all ginkgo trees. It's Who's ever noticed that? Like, yeah. You're walking down the street, like, ginkgo, ginkgo, ginkgo. And, you know, ginkgo to me is like, holy, it's sacred. That's a sacred tree. You know, when they dug up fossils from the bottom of the earth, 18,000 feet down, there are fossils of ginkgo trees that used to dominate the whole earth. Ginkgo and that family of plants used to dominate the earth. There's only one member of that family left alive, and it's the ginkgo. Mm -hmm. Now, I've grown ginkgo in Hawaii and central Ontario, Canada. It grows in both places. That's amazing. That tree can grow in the tropics and in a temperate climate. It's so adaptable. What is that? You ever heard about adaptation? Called adaptogens? The goji berry, it's a super powerful adaptogen because it can adapt to the most extreme climates on Earth. Right? Same with ginkgo. It's an adaptogen. It can adapt to all those things. So what do you get when you eat that? You get that. Right? And by the way, everything that Elements for Life does and everything that I'm about is all about raw, organic. It's right. There's no like, well, we don't kind of know, you know, it might be organic. <laughs> We're, you know, they told us it was like you know, organic. It's not certified, but they told us it was organic. I get that all the time. There's none of that. It's like we, we're going to see, not only do we want the organic certifications, we want the testing, everything tested rigorously. Anyway, so that's Moringa, which is fun, and Ginkgo, which is even for me is like, I, ginkgo's in my heart. I, I, I'm very deeply into plants, obviously. I mean, big time. I mean, I, I think about my ginkgo trees. I'm like, I wonder if they're doing okay. You know, like people think about their like, you know, their kid or like their car at the, you know, at the repairman's. 
Tulsi. I just started putting Tulsi right in front of the house. And that stuff's just a weed. Tulsi, holy basil, super powerful adaptogen, number one in, Ash in Ayurveda. Ashwagandha and Shatavari are number two and three. Ashwagandha is right there, it's the root. Ashwagandha is very closely related to goji berry, by the way. Very closely related. I've grown ashwagandha, has berries, looks like goji berry, it's amazing. Another thing, super powerful adaptogen. Gachu cola, powerful brain stuff. I used to have this guy, he grew gachu cola. And he'd bring it with the wheatgrass when we, at, our, at our office. That was back when we were still in the house. And he'd bring it over and deliver gachu cola, and we cut it, put it through a wheatgrass juicer, and drink it. Your brain just go, <laughs> just light up. I mean, awesome. And then Hoshu Wu, this is a personal favorite. That blew me away when you guys said, I don't know how you guys threw, did you throw that in there because of me? Did that have anything to do with me or no? I mean, I don't know. I mean, they show me, I'm like, Hoshu Wu, I mean, but most people don't even know what this stuff is. Faux tea in the herbal world. It's like a natural, like relaxant, longevity, superfood, super, it's really an herb, it's a root. It can grow, it's like ginseng in Chinese medicine. It's very high in Chinese medicine. It's like number eight, number seven on the whole list, right? If you start going down the Chinese medicine list, number one, goji berry, number two, ginseng, number three, reishi mushroom, number four, cordyceps, number five, astragalus, number six, shizander berry, number seven, Ho Shu Wu. Right? 8,000 food herbs. You know how many there are in Ayurveda? 10,000. Here's what's important. How many do you need to know about? Are you going to know all 10,000 herbs in Ayurveda? 8,000 Chinese medicines? No way. How many do you need? Five. That's all you need. And what do you do with them? You put them with the superfoods, the super herbs going together. You take something like um, okay, that's, oh, you put up cordyceps, nice. Um, you can take something like, I'm going to get into this in a second, but you can take a product like Revitify, which has those, those herbs we were just talking about in there, with a superfood like goji berry or blue green algae, and you blend it or you just eat it together, however you want to do it, and then you get that one-two punch. Again, what is that one-two punch? It appears from all the evidence and at every angle I'm getting this from all the research, and this is a scientific research, that the superfoods deliver the raw materials. Phycocyanin, for example. The blue pigments of blue green algae. What does that do? Stimulates the stem cells. What are stem cells? They become everything. If you need more red blood cells, they'll become red blood cells. If you need bone marrow cells, they'll become bone marrow. If you need to repair a nail, it becomes a nail. If you need to grow more hair, it becomes that. If you need immune system weapons, then they can become that. In, under the right circumstances, if you have the herbs, the herbs will then go, okay, boom, we can help the immune system now manufacture these weapons. And then your immune system goes from the Iraq army to the U.S. military. You with me on this? Who wants an Iraq army as your immune system? Look, I'm not into the U.S. military or anything, but man, you don't want to be facing that at all, ever. So that's kind of what we want to be with like our immune system. We want our immune system, and we're Americans, we want our immune system to be like the American army. Because that, that's gonna beat everybody, by far. We don't even have to send anybody into battle. It's all done like by computers, like a, like a video game these days. Right? That's, your immune system can be like that if you can actually manufacture the material. Okay, let's jump into this because one of the, the great manufacturers of the immune system materials are the mushrooms. Man, I've been doing, I've been doing these events so long. People are like, he's into magic mushrooms now. He's into like some, you know, drugs and stuff. Because most of us never heard of the medicinal mushrooms. How many people have heard of medicinal mushrooms? How many people never heard of it? Okay, these are the most powerful herbs, in my opinion, the most powerful are medicinal mushrooms. That's just my opinion. Now you try it yourself. I'm a mushroom hunter now. I went from all the way knowing nothing about it within five years. Now I'm in the forest. You know, we just